Did you stray yourself here? No, you came because you were invited. Amen. The reason we are here is John 17. That is the reason we are gathered. Jesus spoke to his disciples in a profound prayer. He prayed to his father. And he said, Father, that they may be one. I taught them this last three years. And now it comes to the time I'm going to depart. I have one request. That all of them may be one. And those who would come to know about me by the reason of their evangelism, that they too may be one. And that prayer has been answered by the Lord, his Father. And over time, in our own generation, we decided we're going to be part of that answer to the prayer of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're here tonight to have dinner together. Sometime last year, the Lord began to prompt the heart of pastors and leaders city when we met at meeting point fifth anniversary uh, that was 2022 pastors began to sense in their spirit that it was time to lower down our denominational flags and lift the flag of Jesus we have been too divided for too long which is completely deviant from the prayer of Jesus and so we began to meet in April last year. The first gathering was at Manatee Community Church. And Pastor Doc Valerio, sitting over there, hosted the first meeting. It was an amazing gathering. And since then, we decided we're going to continue to meet month by month. And we moved from church to church. And everywhere we went, we left a mark of our presence. Jesus says, wherever you go and you are received, leave your blessing. And every church we went, we prayed that the unity that we both experience as pastors and leaders will be the experience of the church. And so over, over the months, since April last year, we've seen amazing increase of the presence and the grace of God as we met. When pastors begin to become vulnerable, openly, you know that the Holy Spirit is staring and moving in their midst. Friends, you're invited tonight that we would fellowship with one another and have communion with the Holy Spirit as we continue to see into his eyes, into his face, and into his heart the prayer he made to his Father that we may all be one. And we have said we would like pastors to come with their spouses because oftentimes pastors are so busy pursuing the kingdom and once a while it would be good to have a relaxed atmosphere where we come with our spouses and together we glorify the name of the Lord and that's why we're here tonight to have a wonderful time with each other and to tell the Lord that we heard the prayer you made and we are united in that prayer and we choose to be agents that you can use to bring about answer to that prayer that's why we're here tonight we are making a statement, all of us, as we eat, we are agreeing with heaven. That is a statement. We are agreeing with you that we are united. Every division and wall is broken down. Just as the prayers that have gone before I came off stage. It's prophetic, speaking into the reality of what is in heaven, that it may also be accomplished on earth. As we eat tonight, we are eating in agreement with the heart of the Father, with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. God bless you.
It's just the way my body responds when I, I sense the presence of God in the place. I find myself crying and I, you know, I just can't control myself. In normal circumstances, I'll just lie on the floor. There is such a presence of God here. presence of God will be so heavy in a place like this if it were not because it's in the heart of his heart. If you know the, if you know the battles that have happened within the last one week, just within the last one week, I believe because of this meeting, it will amaze you. For some of you who have received a newsletter, there's supposed to be a ban from Toronto that would have been taking, taking this stand. Their hotel was booked, paid off. In fact, it's non-refundable uh, for the four people. Everything arranged, confirmed. Just yesterday night, they called it off. Regretfully, something the enemy stared at, which I'm not going to go into details. I don't have enough time to recount what has happened within this week, but prayers have been consistent, Amen. persistent, Amen. insistent, and turning. And we ask and make demand of the presence of God. And if you have noticed, all the testimonies were speaking to themselves. And did you hear what Uncle Ken Hall said about the glory? The gold. Everything is speaking to each other. Line upon line, precepts on precepts. We are at the precipice of a move of God in the city Amen. and in this nation. Amen. I just want to leave you with this thought as you walk away. That you are honored like Anna and Simeon who prayed in the temple and one thing they asked God that they might see the consolation of Israel that they might see the revelation of Jesus and who told Simeon at the time Mary came to the temple to deliver Jesus to present him how did he know but by the Holy Spirit he came into the temple and beheld Jesus and he said, now my eyes have seen. Now remember, these people had been praying even before Mary conceived. So God had positioned Simeon and Anna for years praying and interceding for that moment. And they didn't miss it. That's the point. They prayed for something. It happened. They didn't miss it. Both Simeon and Anna were in the temple when Jesus was presented. But that is the problem. That when we prayed, we ought to be expecting. Did you remember the, the apostles? They were busy praying for the release of Peter from prison. Peter is released from prison. And the little girl said, Peter is at the door knocking. <laughs> You all remember their response. <laughs> Go away, you must be out of your mind. It was his ghost. But you have been praying for the release of Peter. Yeah. God is here. God is in the move of his spirit. I want you to leave this dear meeting tonight knowing that you are part of 
a historic moment, I believe with all of my heart, that if the Bible were going to be written, this moment will be captured in the scriptures. I believe so. It's, it's so vital moment. The last thing I want to say, pastors and leaders, we are all called to one place in our service of the Lord. It's called the kingdom. Everyone is called to serve the kingdom. There is one king in this kingdom. And if you miss your focus on the kingdom, you will get busy with ministry. And ministry soon becomes an idol. Because then, your eyes is on the ministry, not on the kingdom. Because when eyes get focused on ministry, there will not be unity. When eyes are focused on the kingdom, unity is a default. If you listen to the preaching of John the Baptist and of Jesus, it's about the kingdom. The kingdom of God is here. It's about the kingdom. John the Baptist didn't talk about his ministry. He talked about the kingdom. Jesus didn't talk about anything about the kingdom. The apostles, when they came, they talked about the kingdom. Apostle Paul, when he came, he talked about the kingdom. The moment you shift your eyes from the kingdom, soon before you realize, you'll be idolizing your ministry. And Jesus said, they will come on that day and say to me, Lord, Lord, we did this in your name, we did that in your name. It's a true statement. But he will say, walk away from me, go away from me, walk us of iniquity, I didn't know you. Why would he use such a strong term? In 1987, the Lord took me in a dream. I've shared this before. And I was in heaven. And I stood before the Lord. I saw many other people whom I knew who were dead. But then I saw an uncle of mine who was alive, whom I lived with. And when I came, and the books were open, and it was written concerning me. And after all was said and done, I was pointed to a place which was my reward. And when I looked at it, I broke down and I began to weep. It's, it's such a very small, tiny place. There was no furniture in there. But where I was, as far as my eyes could see, I saw what truly the Bible calls a mansion. It was like story building and story building. It was massive. From where I was, I could see into the house. Everything was alive. The flowers were living. It's alive. They're breathing. And it was one man's reward. One man. It was incredibly impeccable. Even as I speak now, my eyes is catching it. And when it was my turn, what I was giving was a tiny little thing. And I began to weep. And I said, Lord, is that all I did for you? Because I lived evangelism. Back in the day, I, I, I talk evangelism. I lived evangelism. I ate evangelism. That was how I met my wife. My life was about, if I met you, I want to speak to you about Jesus. The moment I meet you, I want to talk to you about Christ. That was how I lived my life. So when I stood before the Lord, my conscience was clear. You know, I knew that I thought I deserved something more. And I cried and I said, Lord, is that all I did for you? The response Jesus gave me is the response I want to leave with us. He said to me, son, the reward you have is not for what you did for me. It's what you allowed me to do through you. It's only what you allow the Lord to do through you that will stand. Kingdom will unite us. If you ask me of priority, when pastors are making their plans for the year, prioritize our unity meeting together. I will say this from the heart of heart. Prioritize our unity meeting together. Because our gathering together is our strength. Somebody says, 
we are gathered together in unity in my church. Well, that is your tribe. Did you notice? Everything about Jesus is family. Right from creation. When he made man, it's not good for man to be alone. It's not just man as a man, but as a tribe. In other words, I could belong to a denomination. And if we are all united in that, that denomination, it's, it's, not, it's not a big deal. But when our denomination can unite with another denomination, that's a big deal. So when he said it's not good for a man to be alone, he's talking about an entity. When you are alone, standing alone is not good as a church. When you are united with another church, that is good. But even more, when there are multiple of body coming together, it is good. And how do I know? We see it from Revelation chapter 7. This is the last word I want to leave with you. As we go into this year, all of the leaders that have been prayed for here will be meeting and strategizing on the way forward. I want to encourage every one of us. As you serve the Lord in your congregation, see all of us together, united as one body. The Lord bless you. Thank you. The grace of the Lord is sufficient for you. God bless you. God bless you. May the Lord strengthen your hands. May the Lord strengthen the hands of the leadership and give you wisdom and knowledge. Amen. So I am sincerely grateful to God that I am part of history tonight. Amen. I am part of witnessing what the Lord is doing in this house tonight that will stand as a precedence for many more prophetic things to be accomplished in the land. Praise the Lord. So this is a very, very epic and wonderful gathering. I am sincerely grateful to God that we are all here as witnesses. Amen. You know, once upon a time, God decided to create stuff, right? So he created the heavens and the earth, <laughs> and then he also created man. But do you know what he did after he created man? Who knows? He created the woman. He created the woman, praise the Lord. Now, you know, I tell people that women are the last bonds of God. That's right. You know, and after he created the woman, he did what? He, he rested. He rested. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you said it, right? You said it. Praise the Lord. Now, those of us that have children, how do you, how attached are you to your last child? Come on. How attached are you to your last child? You let them get away with several things, isn't it? Oh, you know, no, this is very special. You know, we, we give them all kinds of names. You say they are the handbags of their mothers or their fathers. You know, they are their pets for their dads and moms. And, you know, you don't joke with them, right? Yeah. Now, don't ever joke with the women in ministry of this particular. Hallelujah. And why am I saying this? You know, they will be hosting the talk show this evening. So if you want to really know what is the heart of God this evening regarding what they will be saying, please pay good attention. Tonight, by the grace of God, we're going to present you a talk show. Um, it's a talk show that the Lord has been speaking to us as women, pastors, wives, and women in ministry. By the way, our name just changed to this. We are Women Inspired Network, henceforth. The Lord changed our name because he wants us to bring more women into this group so that we can express ourselves in a way that we grow the family and become much bigger than we have been. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want you to be excited because I'm feeling intimidated. <laughs> yes, relax. Relax. We have come to enjoy in the presence of the Lord and uh, to enjoy also with, with one another. So in 2017, we created um, the Pastors, Wives and Women in Ministry. And one of the struggles I have had over the years is to locate what God is telling me to do in this atmosphere. Honestly, it's been much easier for me to just follow. 
much, much easier for me to just follow and just keep quiet. But the Lord keep nudging me to do things, particularly for the women. So this year, um, he laid two things in my heart. The first one is to do what he called covenant prayer of intercession. To pray for our pastors, to pray for our leaders more than we have been doing. And the second thing he laid in my heart was to talk about family. He said there are so many things about family that are shrouded in doubt or in some kind of uh, pain. And God wants us to talk about those things and to provide solution, provide advice, how families can come out of the difficult situations they find themselves. So when the Lord told me this, I argued a bit. I said to him, you know, I'm a professional. Uh, I want to write my book and publish my book. He said, okay, you're already doing that. Um, and I also said to him, I want to do my business, right? And, and I'm helping Isaac in many other areas. So he said to me, read Nehemiah. So from the 1st of January, I started to read Nehemiah. And what I saw there convicted me to do what I'm doing. Hallelujah. Amen. If you remember, Nehemiah was not one of those prophets that was called. He was not like Prophet Isaiah or Prophet Jeremiah or John the Baptist that were appointed. Jeremiah was an ordinary man like you and I. But he served in the king's palace. And when his brothers came from Jerusalem to visit him, he said, how is Jerusalem? And how are the walls of Jerusalem? And the report he, he got was not pleasant. He said, the people, the remnant in Jerusalem are living in distress. The walls of Jerusalem are broken. And in fact, the gates are burned. And Jeremiah, the Bible said, he closed himself and wept. Nehemiah, yes, Nehemiah wept. He cried and fasted. And in his days of mourning and fasting, he appeared before the king. And the king said to him, I see that your countenance is not looking good. And it's not just your face, but it's something that is coming from your heart. And Jeremiah said, yes, my Lord. There is something wrong. The country where I come from, I had very bad news. And the king said, what can I do for you? And that was how Jeremiah started the journey of rebuilding Jerusalem. He was not appointed. There was a problem. There was an issue. He saw a problem and he decided to attend to that problem. He made up his mind to attend to that problem. I have seen lots of problems with families. I have experienced lots of discontent with families and the Lord is asking us to do something about it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And the thing we want to do about is to um, do a talk show. We want to be honest to ourselves. We just want to talk about it. And I don't know where this, where the Lord is leading us to, but I believe that as we obey step by step, He's going to lead us into where He wants us to go. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I have two ladies who are coming up to have a brief discussion about family, the type of family we have today. And by the grace of God, we will see what the mind of God is concerning families. The first 
lady, I'll call to the table. Um, it's a woman I nicknamed Dexterity. She is excellent in everything she does. And she is the wife of the senior pastor of Capital City Church, Oli. She is Linda Welsh. Please put your hands together for Linda Welsh. She's a very happily married um, pastor, a co-pastor with her husband. She is a grandmother and she's raised a lot of other families in her church. So we're very privileged to have you, Linda. Thank you. Amen. The second lady um, that will have this discussion is someone I met recently. Um, I just became attached to her and glued to her because of her fervency in the spirit. She is also uh, an elderly woman who has seen a lot and has gone through a lot with family and I just want her to share you know her story and her knowledge of family with us. Please put your hand together for my sister Violet Chi. Thank you so much for coming. We really feel privileged to have you because we know you are very busy and uh, the Lord has blessed you with a very big family, a church family. And we just want to hear from your voice. What do you think is responsible for the difficult situation we find in families today? Why are we so, why is the concept of a family so far away from where God initiated the family? Yes. Hello. Well, I'm really honored and blessed to be here, and I thank you and Dr. Isaac for having me here. It's an honor and a privilege, and I have to honor Bishop McEwen and his wife. I'm so blessed. Whenever you walk in a room, greatness walks in, and I'm so blessed and honored to have you both here. So God bless you. Fam I love family. I love everything about family. I am one blessed wife, I'm one blessed mother, I'm one blessed grandma, and I love pastoring. I love, love, love it. We, um, we live in a world that's turned upside down by sin. And uh, we live in a world where people feel they don't need God. And that's a long, hard, tough road. But uh, I can only, I'm not an expert in family, but I am an expert in our family because I do it with the Lord. And uh, we're blessed to have a daughter, Melissa, who is 37 years old. And um, wonderful, 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 absolutely wonderful girl. She has never backsed from the Lord. She uh, has been in church since she was the day she was born. And um, it's all God. It's, it's by his grace. My second name is Grace. It's Linda Grace. And grace to me is an empowerment to do what he has called you to do. And you can do it. You can be the best wife out there, the best mom. It's no accident you have the children that you have. He placed them to you because he knew you would be the best dad. You would be the best mom possible to train them up. We train children up because they have a future. We raise up cattle because they don't have a future, like cows or pigs. We uh, uh, raise them up, but we train things that have a future. So we, we purpose in our hearts, my husband, uh, Michael, and all and I our families are number one ministry it is number one ministry yes we so into our daughter who is now married and has the most wonderful blue-eyed baby boy named Levi he's three years old she said to, and uh, Melissa and Brian both have brown eyes she goes mom I prayed those blue eyes in because her dad, she goes, um, dad has blue eyes and I wanted my boy to have his blue eyes. And um, 
I am blessed. I am so, so blessed. But how did it just didn't happen overnight? I spent many, many hours in prayer, many hours on my knees, not because things were bad at all, but I knew I had to sow the word out there. I had to give God something to work with. I sowed the word. I spent many hours in prayer and still do. There was, it was nothing for me to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning praying for my daughter because she worked out at the airport. I should have to park out there and then walk inside and deal with the public. Many hours I prayed. I have scriptures, 30 scriptures that I confess and speak over our personal family every day and over our church family. And we have the best church family in Ottawa. I know you all think that, but I need to tell you. We do. And so it's by the grace of God, the fruit that we have in our life, it's by the grace of God that we can do what he has called us to do, and I do it with joy. Because he took a little girl from a coal mining town and placed her in the nation's capital. And I love this city. And when I say I love this city, I love the people in this city. And when I meet someone, my end goal is like you, Dr. Isaac, I'm going to see them saved. I want them to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And I believe when I pray for someone for their salvation, my faith is they will be saved. Hallelujah. They will be saved. Amen. They will be saved. Hallelujah. You can cut me off any time because I am a preacher. I'm a preacher. Thank I can you. go on. Thank you. But it's the word of God. That's why when it's the word of God speaking and declaring it over the life, praying over them, praying over them. I mean, we live in the world. People, they don't think we need God. I can't imagine. I look at families. I look at people. And you know they don't know the Lord. My heart breaks for them. It breaks for them. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the, the, the idea of a win talk show for the family is to connect with people like you, Linda, and to get to learn how you raised such a very good family. Um, but my question um, this, this evening is, there are so many people that don't have the privilege or they are not where you are. In their, in their family relationship, either with their husbands or with their children. How can the church best help these kind of people? We preach the uncompromised word of Jesus Christ. We want to get them in our church doors. We want. To, we had a family, uh, say, a year and a half, two years ago, that came in, you knew they were broken. They were, they were broken. I mean, you don't have to be an expert in, you know, but you could tell they were broken. And we started sewing into their life. And then we wanted to meet with them proudly. We started sewing in and sewing in. It's God Almighty alone that does it. That marriage is completely turned around. That family is restored. We got them at the midnight hour. The midnight hour. We have to be a voice and we have to step up and do our part as a church. We have to be out there in our community. When I'm in, I led a girl to the Lord in Shoppers Drug Mart in the lipstick aisle. She's talking to me, she's telling me her problems. And I'm looking for lipstick because I love lipstick. And I'm, she's telling me her problems. I looked, I said, you need Jesus. She goes, I need who? I said, Jesus, let me tell you about my friend. And I did, and I led her to the Lord right there in Shopper's Drug Mart. Amen. That's the way you okay. need to be. When I go to a mall, yes, I'm in there shopping, but I'm looking at the faces too. And you know what? If they don't get saved and know the Lord Jesus Christ, they'll end up in hell. Hell's a real place. It's a real place. And you and I are responsible because someone prayed us in the kingdom. Someone prayed me in. And it's my responsibility or whatever you want to call it. My job is to pray and reach out to other people there because I don't want to see anyone go to hell on my account where I wasn't bold enough to share. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Can you just talk to us a little bit about what has been your experience with raising a family. Because I'm trying to see, because you know, it's not it's not all Christian families that are good or that, you know, that are peaceable. And I know you come from a very, very good family. You know, tell us a little bit about how you, you came about that. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I thank God for the privilege, you know, to be here. Thank God for my pastor here. Pastor Gimba, uh, 
when I entered the city, he received me, you know, because God sent us from Nigeria as missionaries, because he told us that revival is coming to Canada, here in Ottawa, and he's sending us here to help, to curate it. And when we came, we connected with him. So we have been there in prayer. But this is my pastor also. <laughs> Pastor Mike and Pastor, that's the church we attend. When we came, also God led us to this place. And when we got there, you know, they do exactly what we're doing in Nigeria because we believe we are a world-based church in Nigeria. And that's exactly it's a family. Hallelujah. Amen. So seated here to discuss this issue with her, I give God the praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, by the grace of God, um, I came, I would have come with my tab, but I decided to come with my Bible. Because I discovered that uh, we don't carry this any longer. And uh, to the glory of God, um, I lost my first husband when I was 25, going to 26. And uh, already I have four kids, two boys and two girls, because I married early at 18. And uh, my wonderful husband is there. I call him my Adino. <laughs> I never knew him. But he was praying for a wife, and God said, go marry Chinwe, that's my, uh, my Nigerian name, Violet, G Violet, and uh, take care of those children, and I will bless you. Praise God. So when she's talking about coming with children into a new relationship, he has not married before, no kids, and now he's coming with, I'm coming with four. <laughs> two boys and two girls. It was something else. And uh, I've been, in, I've started preaching anyway, started as an evangelist then. So we started working on it. And uh, why I came with this Bible is because people have relegated the Bible to the background and uh, trying to raise children up from all manner of things. And I don't know how they're going to have peace and how they're going to raise godly children. We are seven now because both of us have three twins out there. You know, our first daughter was growing up. She was looking at the surname, the surname of my late husband, and his own surname. She was like, she can't understand, but there is no reason to tell her that he is not the father of all of them. In fact, the truth is that if we don't tell you, you will never believe that he is not their father, hmm. biological father. But most times people look at us because both of us were young, we are 57. <laughs> when people look at us and see tall, tall children, they are like, how come that both of you have those big children? So our daughter calls me Sister Chi. Because she says she is tired of telling people that she is my, that she's my daughter. So if she, I call her now, you hear Sister Chi. That's what she calls me. But what I want to bring out is that in the beginning, God made them male and female, and he blessed them. Right. If we must raise godly children, we must go back to the basis. Come on. Come on. This is the manual of life. You remember the story of David that had good intention to go and bring the ark of God back. It was a very good, wonderful intention to bring the ark of God back. But you know, we always said that the way to hell is paved with what? Good intention. Yeah. He just got everything ready, all dancing and praising and going down there. Without going back to check the modalities, the pattern. How do I get the ark back? Mm -hmm. And on the way, it cost Uzzah his life. Right. And he got offended. He dropped the ark and went. And that's what, exactly what is happening in homes. God instituted family that we are to do what? Raise our children up, instruct them, teach them, send them to the society. But we are not doing that. We talk about all manner of things that are going on in the society. The problem starts from home. And if we must correct what's going on out there in the society, we must get back to our families. For one, I asked my husband, I used to fly from one place to the other across Nigeria preaching the gospel. One day the Holy Spirit called me back and said, Chinwe, go sit down and raise those children up or they'll become the sons of Eli. Mm. You have to go out only twice 
in a week. Sit with them. And to the glory of God, seven of them are in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, ladies, for this discussion. Just one more question before we go. There are quite a number of us here that have invested in their families. Um, but not all of us have what we desire to see in our children. Not all of us desire, but not all of us have what we desire to see in our wives or in our husbands. We are Christians. And we, we read the Bible as well. But the, the force, the energy of the world seem to have overtaken that desire and expectation of many Christian families. What advice would you give a family that is struggling right now? The advice I would give them, like when you go back to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, you know what he said? He told them, stay focused. Lock yourself in. Because I'm not coming to say that all of them uh, align themselves immediately. Like recently, our first son had a chat with uh, Pastor Gimba. You know, there was a little ship there. You know, I have to discuss with him and connect him back and his talking. So we are not saying that everything is going to be rosy, rosy. No, right. we have to dig our heels in. And my right. pastor here has said that one of the things I call here a school of neology. <laughs> you know, we have sociology. Bend your knees. Yeah, I'm psychology. Afraid. Neology. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you keep on keeping on. Like my husband, both of us have this strong personality. Like when I, before I came out, I did a conference of you can dream again. And I like being practical. Where I miss it, I will tell you I miss it. Because somebody like me that has strong personality, has strong personality, they say, no, 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 I don't want it there. Holy Spirit now say, come, you do it like this. You are not representing me. Like yesterday, in fact, after the midnight prayers, we laughed till almost to four. Tears were coming out of our eyes. You know what we're doing? We are recapping the things we went through. So we're not saying it's going to be rusty immediately. No. But you dig your heels in because you have located it in the word that this is what God wants. Like when you go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 6, 16, you know what he told them? When you come into a crossroad and you don't know what to do, go back to the pattern. Discover it. Get on your knees. And for wives, I tell them, most times you don't need to talk to your husband. The Bible says your character, your attitude. You don't just come and rub it in. Oh, this, no, 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 no. Like I said, the school of neology. There are times he will say, oh, I want to go somewhere. And I know the Spirit of God doesn't want us to go there. I don't go argue with him. You know what I do? I got on my knees. By the time I'm done praying, I'll be looking at him. You didn't go again. The money we are looking for, they didn't pay us. I said, oh my days, God, you are faithful. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, please can give us that. Pray, pray, and pray some more. Mm. Pray until something happens. Amen. 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 Did we good, do good for our first talk show? I think we did good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The Holy Spirit actually... Um, selected these um, two ladies. When we um, started thinking about the talk show, I had about eight women in my list. But I kept dropping and kept dropping and kept dropping until I came to both of you. So I believe the Lord has used you this afternoon to open up our talk show. And we're going to continue talking about families and exposing the uh, tricks of the devil and encouraging families to keep praying until something happens. Thank you, ladies. God bless you. Amen. The dream that I had, it was in 2020, uh, during the month of February. I was sleeping then. Suddenly, I saw myself seeing the city. I was like above our church, but I was in the air. And then there was this giant being right beside me. So at first I was a little scared. Then he looked at me and said, why are you scared? And in my dream I felt at peace. Then he told me, look at that. And I was looking down 
that was the city, but it was almost like Ottawa got you know, there were one city. But at the same time, it was on top of, of our church roof. And then he said, what do you see? I said, I see a plate, a big plate in silver. Then he said, that's revival. Mm. Then I said, why is it a plate? Then he, he looked at me and smiled. He said, I'll tell you that mystery later. Then I said, okay, but if that's revival, why is it that I can't see any revival in the city? Then he said, because that revival is not ready. And I said, what do you mean? He said, when that place turns into gold, that's when revival will come. And then I said, but if it's there on the roof of our church, so what do we do to get it turned into gold? And he said, you need three ingredients. So when he said ingredients, I thought he was talking about food. Then I said, which are the ingredients? Then he said, humility, unity, and then he said, truth. But when he said humility and unity, I felt like, okay, we're still working on that. But when he said truth, I was shocked in my dream. Then I said, do you mean the church of Jesus Christ does not have truth? He looked at me again and smiled. And then he said, that's it. And I woke up. That was in February 2020. I shared the dream with my pastor. I sent him a text. Then a couple of months after that, in October, I woke up one morning, was getting ready to go to work. It was around 7 a.m. I know a couple in Montreal at saint Frontier. Um, they are prophetic. And I saw the lady doing a live. And she was sharing a dream that she had on the plane a day before. They were traveling down to Texas. And then she said, you're going to one meeting. And she asked the Lord during uh, the trip on the plane. She said, Lord, I'm going to this place. I don't know who they are. Can you show me who are these people? Then she dozed off on the plane. And then she has this dream, kind of vision. She saw the church where she was going. And there was these big plates in gold on top of the church. And then in the vision, the Lord told her, that's revival. And that church is already living my revival. And then she woke up from that dream in the plane. And she shared it that day at 7 a.m. And I felt like, okay, this was confirmation. God was telling me something. So. Praise God. Good evening. I thank that Pastor Isaac for inviting me to attend tonight. This is my first time with you all. And when the Lord touches my heart, he makes me weep. And um, during the three prayers, I started weeping because the Lord started to let me know that everything that had been in my heart is being validated tonight in this gathering. I'm going to start weeping again. But Pastor Isaac wanted me to share a dream that I had in 2020. It was December 30th. And I don't often have dreams that I remember after I wake, and this one stayed with me. And so I knew that there was a meaning to it. And I will read you exactly what I wrote in my journal. I had a half awake dream this morning on Christian unity in Ottawa with ecumenical leaders at the football stadium in the Glebe. That's the Lansdowne Park. It was epic. Jesus's name was praised. The gospel was preached and people were healed and more people came to Christ. The people repented. Walls and divisions came down and the light shone in the darkness through the forgiveness of sins by the blood of Jesus. And the praise of God reached to the heavens under the open sky. The faith leaders of all denominations went to the Supreme Court and Parliament and prayed over the seats of government and the law, while the corporate body of Christ back at the stadium looked on as it was streamed live on big screen and all joined in prayer, even across the nation who tuned in for this event. Powers and principalities fell and the land was renewed and restored. Amen. What the Lord has been placing in my heart is the need for unity and the fact that our city right now in Ottawa, which is the capital, and as 
one of the previous speakers said, you claim the capital and you, you claim the nation. And I had felt for so long with all the work that we've been doing and how much resistance we had been encountering that Ottawa is under a stronghold. And the Lord has been showing me that the only way we can break this stronghold is if we as Christians come together as one body, no matter from which denomination we belong. I myself come from the Catholic denomination, Catholic tradition, but I have come to love my Christian brothers and sisters from all walks. And we have so much to learn from each other, so much. We are so much stronger together. We can learn from each other. And together we can take back our country for Christ the King. And I just wanted to validate the previous speaker who talked about the gold plates. This morning I had a private mass in my home chapel and the pattern on which we placed the consecrated host was made of gold. And a little eight-year-old boy had attended this mass for the first time. It was just a very small, like four of us. And he pointed out that this plate was made of gold. And so I thought that that just was very interesting that this happened this morning. I really feel that what the Lord has placed in my heart, it's happening now. It's happening here tonight. This is the beginning. And there's going to be a great revival coming across this land. I can feel it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you all for being here tonight and for allowing me to come to be part of this gathering. It, it has really touched my heart. <laughs> but you know what? I remember I was at a Evangelical Fellowship of Canada President's meeting where all the key leaders of the Christian organizations of the nation of Canada were. And they were putting out statistics. And they actually said that the percentage of ministers, pastors, who are truly praying is very low. Who are truly in their word and studying the word of God is very low in Canada. And that's not to put people down, but I've always felt it's a challenge for us as leaders to make the word of God and prayer our number one priority. I once was honored to have dinner with a pastor from Singapore. He had about 11,000 people in his church at that time. And I had dinner with him, sitting at his table. And he said something to me as a young pastor that I never forgot. He says, Michael, in my life, I believe I have to spend 80% of my time as a leader improving myself. So that 20% of the time I spend with people, I will have something to help them with. Amen. And that's been my motto in life, all the time for the last 30 years of pastoring, that I have to take responsibility for me, so I have something to give to the people on Sunday morning or when they need it. Amen. And so if I can challenge you in 2024, be a person of true prayer, of true word. Spend time helping you so you can help others. <laughs> I believe it's such a key word today. Amen? Amen. Well, this has been a wonderful night, hasn't it? Yes. And now it's dinner time. <laughs> Praise Him. And tonight, we have the honor and the privilege to inaugurate pastors and leaders that God has prepared way before now. Some of them, God brought them from different lands, but He had had this plan way before now. And in the fullness of time, we are seeing these things unveiled. I feel so honored and humbled. Some of these leaders are leaders of leaders, but they have accepted with humility to serve the Lord, to serve this city, to serve the cause of the gospel of Jesus Christ in the pursuit of unity. 
May I invite all of the leaders to please stand and come forward. Thank you. Prayerfully, within the last eight months, persistent, consistent prayers have been offered for God to choose for Himself leaders that will walk together, united together, to stir the move of the Holy Spirit in the area of unity. And so we're going to inaugurate them tonight. And we have um, two of our elders in the city. Many of you know Ken Hall and the great work he has done in this city. We honor him, we love him, we respect the grace of God upon your life, and we are only able to do what we are doing because of what they have done. Paul said, I am the master builder, I laid the foundation, and some others build on it. And so we want to honor you, sir, for being here today. And we also have Bishop McKewin, he's here in our midst. Amen. He stands here. We are, we, are, we are what we are because of what they have done. Many of you know one of the bishops that have been here, the foremost bishop that have been here in the city, and toiled and worked tirelessly. And so we are so honored to have him here today as they speak into our lives by the grace that God had bestowed upon them and together we are walking and building into what God has for the future of this city and this nation. And so when Dr. Sandra said there are graces here tonight, it is indeed graces. Thank you. And so Uh, tonight also we have the pastor's wives and women in ministry some of you may not know that they've been working in the background they've been you know when you see a man they said they used to say behind a man is a is a woman no that one is a long is an old adage it's besides a man amen, amen. it's not of me it's besides and so when you see a man in ministry, besides him is a powerful praying woman. And so we kept encouraging our pastor's wives to work together so they can support and help us to be everything God has called us to be. And so tonight we're also going to be inaugurating the leadership of the pastor's wives and women in ministry. In fact, they have rebranded the name. And um, I'm going to be inviting all of the leaders to also come forward. Uh, uh, is Mr. Lewis Joseph Mukesa here? Thank you. Please clap for him. <laughs> Pastor Marie Ogoma. Yes, please clap. Sister Marilyn Bybank.
friends and our colleagues, our leaders, it's a simple statement of commitment. That together we are walking together. And with the grace that God has given us, we will serve faithfully. And so would you please repeat this after me from your heart to the Lord. Lord Jesus, I commit myself to you today to serve you, to love you, to serve your people with all my heart. I trust you for grace. I depend on you for wisdom. I count on you for I count on you for help to do all that you've called me to do to be the witness you've called me to be to shine the light that you've called me to shine I commit to walk for the unity of the body of Christ help me that my heart will be united with you Always. I depend on the help of the Holy Spirit to empower me, to strengthen me, to enable me. I count on the wisdom of the Lord. In Jesus' name. and then I'll hand it over to Bishop. When I came to Ottawa, I was a, a good separatist Baptist. If any of you know what, the, what they are, uh, there aren't usually very many of them in a uh, unity gathering. They, they have very deep convictions and they uh, are very uh, word oriented and they are very strong in holding the whole body together because of their their depth of conviction but I was invited to a pastor's prayer meeting by a Lutheran minister and after I checked him out to make sure that he was orthodox and that he believed in Jesus and he believed in the inspiration of scripture we began to have wonderful fellowship together and Eventually, I encountered the Holy Spirit, and uh, that experience and the, the unity that comes from experiencing the Holy Spirit knits us together in a way that intellect and doctrine can't. And so, from that day, for many years, we participated in a spirit-led, spirit-empowered fellowship that continued and continued. In my mind's eye, I see in the midst of the chaos and the darkness of the world, there is a river. There is a river, it's like a tree with many branches. And from the very utmost parts, the river is flowing. It's flowing, it's flowing. And it's the Spirit of God uniting His people through their faith in Jesus. And as that river flows, it becomes more and more powerful. But there are two things I'm persuaded that God is doing in all the earth. One is that He's answering the prayer of Jesus. May they all be one. And secondly, He is taking the believers and spreading them to the utmost parts of the earth so that when all have heard Jesus will come those two things I am sure of in the midst of all the chaos and I also know that the foundation and the most frequently word used for every gifting 
for the apostle and the prophet and the evangelist and the pastor and teacher. They're all deacons. They're always described as having the duty of a deacon. And when we have that understanding, then there's a humility that comes because we recognize we can only give what we have been given and we are called to serve in the lowliest of ways in order for the body to become one. Mark DuPont is a prophet who was, uh, to whom God gave the word concerning the Toronto outpouring that happened in, in 1994. And he had a vision and the Lord showed him glory, golden drops of glory coming on cities, but only on some cities. And he said, Lord, what is happening? Why is there no glory on these other cities? And the Lord said, the pastors are too proud and too divided. So what's happening here in terms of bringing us together and declaring our unity in Christ by the power of the Spirit, by the will of the Father. This puts us in a place where in humility we are able to receive that, that mercy of glory coming on the city. May it be so. Father, I just bless this new team that you have gathered together. You have knit them together with love and humility and out of that love and humility, unity is increasing and increasing. Father, I thank you for the, the many, many pastors and leaders and lives that have been invested in this city in the last 50 years. And, and stone upon stone, you have been building a temple in which you can come and inhabit where you will be welcome and your people will be at one and the glory will be among them that they may recognize their oneness. Because Jesus said, I'm giving you the glory, not propositional truth, but I'm giving you the glory that you may be one. Father, let your glory come upon this team. Amen. The leaders, the pastors, the wives, the women in ministry, may your glory come, Father, Amen. that it might weld them together Amen. into one unit in which you can be manifest. Amen. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Stand, please. Hallelujah. We thank the God for you. We praise Him for your commitment. And we're going to ask God to minister to everyone for His divine glory. Amen. Let's bow our heads in the name of Jesus. We're gathered here before you, Lord. We thank you for these men that thou hast called. It is a great leadership, this great mission. Thou art so good to your children, and we honor you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, because you never fail your children. We thank you, Father, for these men and women who has committed their lives unto you, who have gone through troubles and all kind of situation. But Father God, they stand the weather for you. 
Lord God, I pray that your blessing will surround each and every one in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we pray your divine commitment. Hallelujah. Your divine protection. Your divine protection. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray, Father God, that you will keep them safe from harm. Hallelujah. And that their face will shine upon your children. Shine upon them. They give you the glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray that your blessing will surround them day and night. In the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that their desire of their heart will be manifest and granted. I pray, God, that you lift up the desire of the heart of every pastor stand before us today. That I will grant them success in every plan that they have in their ministry, Amen. which they must call them unto. God, fulfill their dreams. Hallelujah. Fulfill their dreams. Oh. Fulfill their... Eh, oh, fulfill their dreams, God. In the name of Jesus. Let be manifested. Let them not fear. Oh, God, but give them boldness in the name of Jesus. To preach your word in season. And out of season, rebuke and reprove according to your purpose. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you'll fill your hearts with joy, gladness, according to your divine plan. And God, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in them. In the name of Jesus. And that they administer your word, God, without fear. According to your will. Oh God, I pray. Every man, every pastor will stand before you. That they committed their life to you. Surround them, God, with your bountiful blessing. Hallelujah. And God, I pray for everyone. Every lady, every woman. In the name of Jesus. To stand before you. Even now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I pray God in the name of Jesus. That thou will continue. To manifest yourself. In their lives. In their family. Oh God I ask you. Hallelujah. That you manifest thyself. And they stand to minister your word. Without fear. That God's souls will be brought into the kingdom. I thank you for them. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for every pastor. Every pastor. Hallelujah. I thank you for their wives. Oh, glory to God. And ask that you will keep them abiding in your love. As we surrender our will unto you. Great is the Lord and greater to me, praise. God, from the rising of the sun, even to the setting of the same God. Your name is worthy to be praised. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh Lord my God. Let the words of our mouth. And the meditation of our heart. Hallelujah. 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 Be accepted in your sight. Oh glory. In Jesus mighty name. The grace of God be with you all. And God's people say amen. 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 Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are.